I think it was Hemingway who said this. He visited certain parts of uh, India, he visited the wrong places. And he saw certain people and went back and then he said, if you don't eat well, if you're not dressed well, if you don't live well, you must be spiritual. <laughs> How's that? But at the same time, <clears throat> another very prominent American who is still seen as one of the keenest minds that America ever produced, Mark Twain, you read some Mark Twain here? Hmm? Mark Twain came visiting India because he was so fascinated with Indian mysticism. He found the right kind of guide who took him around and he met many people. And when he was leaving, he said, anything that can ever be done, either by man or God, has been done in this land. So both have happened, the peaks have happened and the most horrible depths have happened. It, the question is just this, are you going to be the peak or are you going to be the bottom? That's an individual choice. But now, uh, making the choice, what do I do, where do I go, they're making this more and more complex and more and more deceptive. Now, if someone is going to tell you that your dead father is in the highest heaven, it's very satisfying, hmm? Isn't it so? And if someone is willing to tell you your mother-in-law is in hell, If somebody is going to tell you, you yourself are going straight to heaven, it is even more reassuring. But is that… are you in such a childish state of mind that this is all you're seeking? Some idiot who does not know where he is going, is going to tell you where you are going. <laughs> is that all you're looking for? So, this is a decision you have to make, am I looking for solace or am I looking for a solution? If you're looking for solution, then it's a different game. If you're looking for solace, it's a different game. Solace is just cheap psychiatry, you know. Don't worry, everything will be okay. Don't worry, everything will be okay. God is uh, just keeping his lap open just for you. If you die, you're going to land straight in his lap. <laughs> See, if you are going to land in God's lap, I don't think you should postpone it for tomorrow. <laughs> no? Isn't it? If you're going to land in such a blessed place, you should not postpone it for a moment. This is okay for somebody else, not for you, isn't it? It's all right to tell this to somebody. Not for yourself, it doesn't work, isn't it so? Yes? But something that doesn't work, we have peddled for too long. So what really works has been lost in this confusion. The only thing that you have to work with right now is your body and your mind. These are the only two things you have. No, my soul, you can't work with it. Nobody ever worked with a soul. You can only use your body, you can use your mind, isn't it? These two things, if you bring it and make them into conducive vehicles, then something beyond becomes a living possibility. Not because you believe in it, not because it's written in your great scripture, not because somebody that you think is a great guru said that, simply because you have found a way to go beyond the limitations of your body and your mind, that's all. Otherwise, no way, no other way it's going to happen. I did everything for the wrong reasons, but I did the right things. 
so it works. So I want you to know, it is not the intention, it is the nature of action which yields the result, isn't it? Yes or no? Even for the wrong reasons, if you do the right things, right things will happen to you. That is how the damn existence is structured, what to do? That is why good people are always suffering. <laughs> people who believe they are good, they are always suffering because they have great intentions but stupid actions, so they suffer. So this is… this whole idea of right and wrong, good and bad is all human nonsense. Existence is not human-centric. They've always told you, many religions of the world have been going about telling people, you are made in God's own image and once you are in God's own image, Naturally, the place that you live in this planet is the very center of the universe. They believed this for a long time, isn't it? Even now they're insisting. You heard of this guy Copernicus? Copernicus was one of the first guys who came and said, Earth is not the center of the universe. Not only not the center of the universe, it is not even the center of the solar system and he promptly died. That's not bad thing, it's a good thing. Because the next man after him, when he uttered the same thing, they wanted to peel his skin off and the skin would not cooperate. So they decided to burn him alive. The next significant man who uttered the same thing was Galileo. He said the same thing, then they got ready with the skin peelers. Then he said, no, 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 earth is the center of the universe and the cosmos. What is my problem? <laughs> As you say, earth is not only the center of the solar system and not only the center of the universe, it is the very center of the cosmos. Anyway, I do not know what is the center of the cosmos. You want to assume, I want to save my skin, that much I know. <laughs> so today science has proved to you that uh, definitely earth is not the center of the solar system. In the universe you are just a minuscule, tomorrow morning if you and your planet disappears, if it evaporates, nobody is going to miss it. Hmm? The whole solar system evaporates tomorrow morning, it will be just a small vacant place that nobody is going to miss in the existence. Nothing is going to happen, yes? God won't come rescuing you, it'll just poof, it'll go. This is a good thing. This whole idea that I am made in the image of God has left man so crude and he's been walking upon this planet so wantonly without any concern for any other life on this planet simply because he believes he is in the image of God. If you knew that your life is as significant or as insignificant as that of an ant, it is actually. All these grand ideas that human beings have about themselves, that we are made in the image of God and God loves us and… These are dangerous ideas which has made human beings so uncaring, unresponsive to life around him. He thinks this planet and universe is all made for him. No other life has any right to live here except him. He's just lost all his… Marbles in his head are gone, simply because of these kind of ideas. Now, modern science 
sort of has been very bad for your ego. Now it says you are just a blob of nothing. Pulsating like this right now, tomorrow poof. Really? See, whatever you think about yourself, are you breathing everyone? Is everybody breathing? No yogis. Nobody is able to hold their breath and sit. Inhalation, exhalation. Inhalation, exhalation. Inhalation, exhalation. The next inhalation didn't happen. Wherever we search, you don't exist. Yes or no? See how fragile it is. Just breathe carefully, it may go away. <laughs> it's like a balloon, in and out, in and out, out and it didn't go in again, <laughs> gone. That fragile. At the same time, how sturdy, hmm? Isn't it so? How many things a man can do? But at the same time, how fragile. It doesn't take an elephant to kill you, a damn virus <laughs> So, without knowing the essential nature of life, we are trying to somehow blunder through, that's the whole problem. Now how to exist here? Today how to live? How to make this life in such a way? that it is conducive to know, experience and manifest deeper dimensions of life as a way of living. If you want to receive the deeper dimensions of life, if you have to become conducive, if your mind and your body and your energies have to become conducive to receive something beyond what you are right now, First and foremost thing is, they must listen to you. They must take instructions from you. If your body, if your mind, if your energies took instructions from you, would you naturally keep it in utmost pleasantness? Yes or no? You would? So, if you keep this continuously pleasant, if you be, keep this constantly pleasant, then your intelligence will flower to a completely different dimension of perception. When you are no more an issue, when you are no more an issue by yourself, there are million issues on the outside, but you are not the issue, you are just fine. If you become like this, you become receptive. So always, the yogic systems have been talking about blissfulness, ecstasy, ananda, you know all this stuff, not because blissfulness is a goal by itself. It is only in a state of pleasantness, this will be at the highest level of receptivity. Otherwise, when this is a in turmoil, when this is an issue by itself, it cannot receive, it cannot understand the core of life the way it is, it can only fight for survival.